Hi, everyone, <laughs> and welcome to Local Chat. That slurp brought to you by water. Water. Oh, um, it's when drink it. You <laughs> son of a biscuit eater. You really threw me amazing. off on that one. <laughs> I was like, what is he doing? Um, folks, welcome to Local Chat. We are a gaming news podcast brought to you by the lovely people here at Subpixel. If you enjoy the gaming news, then you'll enjoy this podcast. Joining me today is a man who slurps water louder than a waterfall, Ian Gibson. It's wet for a reason, folks. It belongs in your mouth. <laughs> also joining me is a man who couldn't solve a Rubik's Cube if he had a gun to his head. It's, uh, it's Chris. Uh, it's only missing the one spot. It's got Goofy. <laughs> I'm sorry, wait. So the only thing missing with solving a Rubik's Cube is, like, violent motivation. Yeah. <laughs> To be fair, you I started that? this Rubik's Cube 25 minutes before around the monitor as a joke to get uh -huh. Goofy gotcha. on stream. Uh, and, and you couldn't like, finish oh. it. Yes, I'm, I don't know. I don't know Rubik's Cubes. I'm not a Rubik. <laughs> not Who a am Rubik. I, Rubik's son? <laughs> what, a, what, a, what am I, Johan Rubik? I put my straw <laughs> in your Rubik's Cube and drink it up. Uh, uh, folks, there's a lot I'm of gaming. I'm a trapezoidal <laughs> boy. <laughs> Sorry, oh. right here. There is a. Uh, it's. <laughs> <laughs> Learn to. Oh, slurp. audio listeners! <laughs> I'm sorry you missed that. Um, it's hot in in my office. Uh, oh, my because mouth. it's I can't have the HVAC on because <laughs> the main vent is right here and it sounds like a jet engine. Um, so it's warm here. It's just gonna be warm in here. I also degrees. I installed um string lights in here so i didn't have to have the overlay overheads on uh and they get a little bit warm but uh it's looking good in the office over here uh folks uh we got lots of gaming news to talk about but before we talk about gaming news we have to talk about what we've been playing and to start us off chris what have you been playing I've been playing very few things. I've been a busy, busy little boy, uh, but I did make time to play Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion. <gasps> That's right, folks. It's tax season. Time to evade your taxes with Turnip Boy. Um, <clears throat> it's fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is this game? Because I have uh, no idea from the title. It's like, it's like a top down, like Zelda esque, like, kind of like a, you know, like Oracle of Ages seasons or like Link's, Link's Awakening, that era of Zelda. Gotcha. You go to a location, you get a new item, you use that item to solve puzzles, rinse and repeat. Um, and uh, it's got it's got quippy dialogue. Uh, very, it's very, it's very like modernly written and like using a lot of slang. It, it, the writing is pretty good. It's 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 the comedy lands. I would say it's not like the par of like Donut County's writing, which is like mm -hmm. simultaneously funny but also has like some you know there's, there's some substance to it. This is all just just dick jokes. Um, Ooh. And uh, it's the game is serviceable. It has a plot twist that you you I can guarantee you won't see coming because you have no way of seeing it coming. And and in a in a game called Turnip Boy commits tax evasion, uh, you're not ready for the grim horror. Let's just he didn't commit way. tax evasion. Oh, he did. He did. He totally committed. <laughs> I was about to say um, <laughs> that'd be a good twist. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, look, it's not an amazing game, but it, it was funny for the two and a half hours it took us to beat it how much was uh, it 10 bucks eight bucks i think that's not bad it's like the price of a movie yeah. ticket i guess not unless you have movie, movie pass <laughs> or hbo max and the other thing that the, the other thing the thing that i currently have 135 hours in is rpg maker xp it's all folks. idle time folks it's, I, it's <laughs> i'm so excited for this because we made a promise when you finish it we will play it on stream. Yes, let's go. We yeah. played the demo on stream last week. People I was fucking enjoyed it. I need to go watch uh, that. It's a, uh, it, it'll be up. The, the Nuzlocke episode one went up today, and the demo will go up probably Friday, I would assume, um, or maybe Saturday. I don't it's know. on Twitch. Um, right? Real quick, um, I don't mean it's to take yeah, away. It's about on Twitch. I don't mean to take away a view from you, but Will, I feel like you should not watch it so that both of us can go into this fresh. That's true. I, I did have... Uh, uh, he has like a year to forget it. Because so. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about... Because um, I, 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 you've told me what Ian and I are in the game, but I was like, part of me was like, 
I really want to be the curmudgeon trainer who hates Pokemon. And my only Pokemon is something stupid that is awful. And I just make fun of it the whole time. And I'm just terrible. <laughs> and that people can just beat me. You do like famously love naming guy. things Trash Can. <gasps> the, all of my Dragon Quest heroes are named Trash Can. Because it is the funniest name. Uh, and it's not on the nose like when people name their characters my ass or my dick. Trash Can is just funny because perfectly nice people are calling you Trash Can. And yes, that, that is pretty. That funny. brings. How me you doing, trash can? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just rude. Um, um how yes, a lot of hours in that, and uh, I've been building a Pokemon game, and it's taking a while. Fucking shocker. There's specific <laughs> like you. There's a pack for the RPG maker. Yes, it's called. Pokemon, it's called. Right? It's called a uh, Pokemon Essentials. It's made by the Pokemon Essentials team. And then um, there is a guy on YouTube. Uh, his YouTube channel is called Thundaga. Um, and he has made basically the Bible of like how to use this uh, the service to make your own Pokemon game. Uh, and like those coupled together can teach you literally anything you would need to know about how to how to do it, how to make the Pokemons. Nice. Mm. And how to, it, how to put how to put Nintendo out of business. Yeah. What tile set is it? Uh, it's a ge- a generations three and four. So like Pokemon Sapphire, Ruby and Emerald and then uh, uh, Diamond, Pearl and Platinum. OK, I played I played Ruby. So I at least know that much. Um, that's awesome. I'm actually excited to play that because um, homemade stuff is always better than the real thing. Said on amateur a, porn. On, uh, on, <laughs> on stream, one of our Patreon supporters, Joe, said, uh, yeah, support small creators. And I was like, there's no more small creators than three people making an entire fucking Pokemon <laughs> game. <laughs> one man made Stardew Valley. Oh, um, that's awesome. That's true. <laughs> Um, sweet. Uh, Ian, what have you been playing? Well, I've, I've kind of had a bit of a wishy-washy week. I started out by... Nobody beats the Slurp King, all right? Yeah, I almost died on I that. I have noodles. <laughs> uh, so I started the week by playing another hour and a half of Prey 2017 to bring my total playtime up to two and a half hours, and I feel like I'm in a Seinfeld episode because... I don't know if I should say it's not you, it's me, or <laughs> it's not me, it's you, because that game is just still not grabbing me. Um, hmm. I feel like it's got an interesting story, but again, I really don't like how it is a quote unquote immersive sim, which means that you are basically obligated to look at and touch every single freaking object, corner, crevice, tabletop underneath area in every single area i just hate doing that because then i walk into an area and i don't go wow this is pretty look at that i go all right let me just divide this up into a search zone and i guess i'll start in this room and i'll go left to right and i'll start in this corner and it just becomes this big like like scavenger hunt and i don't appreciate that i know that's what the genre really is but they just i don't feel like they do a great job of it and the combat sucks I don't like the combat. <clears throat> Does the combat get better? I still have like the pistol, the glue gun, and the wrench, and it just doesn't feel good. I don't like the glue gun, and I heard that's supposed to be the best gun in the game. What, am I doing something wrong? Here? I, I like I like the shotgun the most. Yeah, the shotgun um, was probably like like Bioshock. The shotgun was the best. Okay, I think I'm done playing it, guys. To be honest mm. with you, I I feel like I've seen enough of the game to be hooked. And yet I'm not hooked. And so have you messed with like the mimic powers or anything? Uh, No, but I I see them on the tech tree a little bit. So I kind of know what's coming. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't know. It's it's weird. They keep dangling mechanics in front of me, but none of them are really hooking me. And I don't think it's because they're bad. They're and I don't even want to say they're not for me. It's just in this instance, I'm just not being being hooked. It's like it's like it's like a bad relationship where you you go out with somebody and you're like, this is going to be great. And then there's just not enough chemistry there. You know what I mean? You guys ever have like video game relationships like that where you play a game and you're like, I'm ready. This is going to be great. And then it's just not there and you can't really pinpoint why. Yes. Yeah. Well, what I want to say is I I feel like two sucks. (laughs) I feel like Chris and I could sit down and watch Ian play a video game and within five seconds, we would go, oh, and somehow you've been playing video games wrong for the past, however, 45 years, and you're just I, 
that's why you hate everything. I would love that. <laughs> but okay, I, so there's I have just assumed you're a man full of hate. <laughs> I you know, honestly, I do I do feel like that. And there are definitely moments where I feel like I am not necessarily being a contrarian. No, there are moments where I ask myself if I'm being a contrarian, but I'll point to some examples where that has not happened. Number one, I hated the Lord of the Rings films the first two times I watched them. In like 2000... Full of hate. In like 2003, and then in like 2000... How old were well, you in 2003? I, read the books, I was like 13. How do you hate things? How? I just don't like... I, it's not that I hate it. I was just like, this is boring. I don't like this. And then in 2012, I just read the books. I was 22 and I watched them. Didn't like them. I rewatched them again when the 4K Blu-ray came out recently. Guess what, folks? I liked them. So I am capable of changing my opinion and like coming to something with an objective viewpoint and giving it a second, or in this case, a third chance. Um, and the second thing is, it's like you watch a lot of bad... You guys ever seen the movie Playtime? It's a French movie from the 60s. No. Uh, maybe in film school, but I don't remember. Is uh, that by Jean-Luc Jean 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 Godard? No, no, it's from a different French guy. I can't remember. Nice French name. filmmaker. Anyways, look, let me put it this way. You watch movies and it's like, I'm sure you can relate to this. You watch movies and you go, I guess that was an okay movie or that was kind of a stupid movie or yeah, I guess that was good. That was like a solid eight out of 10. And you kind of just like are in that rut where you're just watching a lot of like, I don't want to call it mediocre movies, but movies where you're like, yeah, I guess I liked it. I laughed, but it, it didn't really blow me away. And you're like, mm. maybe I don't like movies anymore. Maybe I'm just being too critical. And then I watched Playtime because some film critics were just like, hey, we recommend this to everybody because it's really good. And I was like, I've never heard of it. Let me watch it. And I cried at the end of that movie. It's not even a sad movie. It just was such an incredibly beautiful, brilliant movie that I was crying tears of joy from the experience of having watched it. And that's just a point where I'm like, no, I'm not jaded. I'm not a contrarian. I just have very high standards. And there's very few things that come above that. So that's my defense is that <laughs> I do have high standards, but that doesn't make me, it makes me slightly less of an asshole. So on the, uh, on the official <laughs> Subpixel movies rating list, Playtime, currently one of one. Incredible movie. Oh. I would highly recommend watching it. But my <clears throat> point is just that I think with Prey, it's just not above that threshold, but it's also not low enough where I like hate it. And it's hard for me to point out specific big things that are bad about it. I'm just mm -hmm. kind of like. Ugh. you know like a lot of scorsese movies where i'm like yeah i guess it was good but i'm not crazy i, I feel like the other thing is you're not the type not saying this is the case but you're not the type of person to push through the muck to get to do the you, like do you fun enjoy start. survival horror games usually <clears throat> but prey's not really survival horror though i mean i'd argue it is you're, you're dealing with lim a very limited amount of ammunition and a in a very effective like aggro I environment I haven't had that problem, though. And, and the Mimics, they do a little bit of damage, but they don't come across as super scary. And this is from somebody who does not play survival horror games, does not play horror games, because I hate them. I'm terrified. I, I, I stopped playing them. I just don't, oh, I mean, don't like, try it. Survival horror does not mean horror anymore. And like Resident Evil is survival horror. I like, don't play those games. I couldn't, I couldn't handle Resident Evil 7. So, so it's, mm. it's... Great game. I, I don't think it's that. I wish that was that. I, I'm looking for an easy answer. Anyways, so let me move on <laughs> and just say, I played an hour and a half, again, of Prey. I'm not going to play the game anymore. And then I'm like, well, what am I going to play? So I bounced around. I tried the retro mode in MLB The Show 21. Maybe I don't like baseball games. Well, you were talking about trying that out. Did you try that out? No, because it looked dumb. Yeah, it is kind of dumb. It does a better job of representing baseball as a video game than the realistic mode that we were playing on stream. Um, but it's still just... I don't know. Maybe I just need to play some like backyard baseball because I never did, but I always wanted to. Uh, Super Mario Strikers. <clears throat> I could play that, or I could just go back and play Winnie the Pooh's home run derby for the um, yeah. <laughs> a man of See, a man of class, folks. Thank you. That's above the bar. That's above the bar, folks. Disney's so extreme skate can we, adventure. Can we put that on the list? <laughs> home run derby. Oh, wait, I think we've played that for. I've definitely put it in a video before. And I played it on a stream when I quit that one episode of Spooky Pixel halfway through. I, I played. Yeah, because you were a baby. Exactly. Back to survival horror. So um, I think it's just not a good baseball game. And it's, it's, it's weird because that is the most realistic baseball game there is. But it's just. Who wants realism Anyways, in the video game? Speaking of realism, I did play some Battlefield 1943 because that's on Game Pass. Good game. And it's good. It's still really yeah. good. Um, my one qualm with it, though. This is not really a qualm with the game itself, but just with how it's presented nowadays. It's not really up as far as I can tell in any way. 
So it's it's either I think it's running at like 720p. Mm, like yeah. they they have not done anything to, <clears throat> to even just do like a dynamic upscale or anything like that. And I really could use it because that game does have some shooting distance. And there's a lot of times where you're trying to shoot somebody like 80 meters away and you're like, oh, there's a blur. It's like a pixelated blur. <laughs> Is it the brown pixel or the green pixel? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And Fire. so that could really that could really use some of that backwards compatible magic that Microsoft does where they're just like, hey, this uh, Crimson Skies is now in 4K. And it's like, what? You know, that weird magic they do. Yeah, but Battlefield's a, Battlefield's a dead franchise, according to EA. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But no, I, but it's crazy because I was playing that and I got into matches, full matches. There's people playing that game. Yeah. It's crazy. People love Battlefield. Uh, I don't know why EA doesn't love Battlefield. <laughs> I know. Bad Company I played 3. War Thunder. You guys, you guys ever played War Thunder? I the war thunder world of tanks world of warships all those i can't i in theory i, hear you. I should be into that it yeah. it just yeah it doesn't it doesn't phase me i yeah. my brothers and i were gonna try world of warships because we come from a a, a ship family uh and uh zach within like 15 minutes texted me he's like yeah it's not worth the setup and i was like okay see i i i, I wouldn't go that far but it's 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 just a weird it's a game that is split in two because on the one side, the gameplay is pretty good, especially World of Warships. Um, and the reason why I picked up War Thunder is because they've they've added ships a couple years ago and I didn't realize it. And basically, World of Tanks and War Thunder are basically the same game, really. They both have tanks. They both have warships. They both do that kind of battle mode, etc. Um, but World of Warships actually has pretty good combat. You know, because you're like trying to dial in your shots and you're like, you got somebody 10 kilometers away and they're moving, but they're zigzagging. So you're trying to like time the shots properly. And then there's like planes overhead. So you're setting up your AA. And in World of Warships, you can have an aircraft carrier. So basically you like hide your aircraft carrier and then take control over the planes. So you're like guiding their torpedo paths. And the other players like trying to dodge the torpedoes. Great gameplay. The problem is it World of Tanks and War Thunder both have a very, very similar worst free-to-play monetization system i have ever seen it's like any any sort of monetization effort you can think of short of ad breaks short of mandatory ad breaks is in there they have multiple paid currencies they they have billboards they have like time locks (laughs) they have like time locks you know where it's like oh you have this item but it's only here for seven days they have like multiple research trees and then spend money to speed up the research trees and here's a limited time event here's a login event thing and it's just like it it's to the point where it's not just frustrating that you have to pay for all this and it's not just frustrating to the point where you see all these paid players and they're just rolling around in tier seven ships like decked out in gold armor it's frustrating mostly because it is horribly confusing like they they have mechanics where it's like you need to pick your crew for your ship and then you need to upgrade your crew you also need to upgrade parts in your ship and then eventually you can research the next level of ship and all of that is cloaked behind all this horrible monetization multi-currency bs and so it's like i can't even really play the game and understand it because of all the monetization on top and it just it's awful it sucks because i i played like five six hours of world of warships i have enjoyed it the gameplay is good it's just it's behind a terrible thing um between this and escape from tarkov you're just getting ruined by terrible onboarding experiences i know i know but the weird thing is like it's not even onboarding with this it's like persistence it's like onboarding where you're trying to understand these systems and then even once you understand them you've got to constantly grapple with them unless you're just doling out money to them all the time um I also played right on your parade. Did you guys see this? This was a Game Pass game that came out last week. I saw. I saw yeah, it on Twitter. I played, I played about an hour of it. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty cutesy. I don't know if I'm gonna finish it, but it's. It was definitely just like a let me sit down and play something. It, what, what did you think, Will? Uh, yeah, it was about the same. It was pretty cutesy. It had a really good uh, Metal Gear Solid reference. I thought that yeah. level was pretty fun. Um, but did you get to the Office reference? No. So I. I, I th- I'm not sure if I'm going to go back to it, but I might just go back to it because it doesn't feel like there was that yeah. much left in it. So, or not left in it, but I mean, rain cloud and you rain on people. Yeah. Yes. There was enough uh, variety to the raining that I thought yeah. I'd be okay finishing <laughs> it. It's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like <clears throat> donut County where it's like, Hey, here's a level. You have your mechanic, like beat the level using the mechanic, but right. it is much, much better than donut County. And yes, I am deliberately shitty on donut County because donut County is like, is like inch deep. And nothing more. 
you know, it's just like, here's 12 levels. I guess they're all basically the same. Whereas like, like Will said, there's a very good like stealth mission, which is basically just the opening of Metal Gear Solid, but you're a cloud and you've got to avoid the guards. There's an office reference, which all I'm going to say is that the level is the office, the TV show. Oh, um, yeah. They are doing a lot of crazy things and they're being very self-referential and it's, it's got great humor and it's improving and doing dynamic mechanics, which Donut County really didn't do. Um, so, hey, if, I would say it's on Game Pass. Just get, If you got Game Pass, just give it a shot. You know? Do it. Finally, folks, we need to talk about the Mortal Kombat movie. Did you guys see it? Haven't seen it yet. I keep, I keep meaning to. I've just been a busy boy. I've seen it. Yeah. It's, I mean, I don't know. It was, it's kind of, it's similar to the first one. Like, it picks up right after the first one. But it still just has, like, really bad, like, cinematography and editing. What? And it just, like, barely makes any sense. Why'd you say it picks up right uh, after the... Did you watch Annihilation? Like, I did watch Annihilation. <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> and I also watched the new one. Look, I knew you were I gonna... wanted to give this... I want to give this maximum effort because I don't care about Mortal Kombat. I never really... I don't want to say I didn't like it. I just didn't care for it. So... Will and I watched the Mortal Kombat movie. What was it like a year and a half ago? It must have been it's before the original. The pandemic. Yes, yeah, the original. It is... I fucking love that movie. It's the best I, of I don't the know three. Can... <laughs> it's so good. It, it is. It is the best of the three. But that's not saying. Hello, it. baby. <laughs> it's. I don't know. It's. It's weird. It's like it's low enough that it should be so bad. It's good, but it wasn't quite there for me. So oh, it was really? just kind of for me. For me, it is, oh, it is, it's. It's because I think I think I grew up playing a ton of Mortal Kombat. Because my okay. friends, my, my, when I was a kid, my friends and I only played fighting games. So the Street Fighter movie and the Mortal Kombat movie <laughs> are near and dear to my heart. The Mortal Kombat movie is so pure. It's yeah. very good. Yeah. These are $500 shades, asshole. Yeah. So I wanted to give the new one the best effort I could, again, trying to be objective. And so I was like, I should probably watch Annihilation. I've heard very bad things about it, but it is the second in the three Mortal Kombat movies, even though the third one's not related to the priors. I was like, I got to watch it. So I watched it the other day. It's it's like the first movie, but worse and not <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> like, you know, in the first movie, there's like certain scenes and dialogue that just don't quite match up. And you're just like, OK, yeah. you're just making jumps here. The third movie is that times 10. There's just so many different like jumps. And you're just like, OK, I'm all over the place now. And they like shot the fights worse. So they're not even interesting. It's anyways. Third movie, though. Will, you saw what do you think? Uh, I I enjoyed it. I thought it was enjoyable. Uh, I thought I thought some of the actors were very bad, and I thought one or two of the actors were very good. And I okay. thought the Goro in the first movie looked better than the Goro in this movie. <laughs> I've seen screenshots of the Goro; it ain't great. It, oh. it's, honestly, it's not it's not bad in the new one. It's just that the old one was so good. Well, it's it was not really it's not that it's bad. It's the green screen that is bad. Like the model is yeah. really good, I can but see the that. mixing yeah. and the lighting is not quite. It looks like an unrendered Blender model. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think I checked out of the movie by then, so I was just barely hanging on by a yeah. thread. <laughs> um, yeah, I wasn't a fan of it. It, it they're trying to do a serious Mortal Kombat story. And I don't want that. I almost want the first movie, but deliberately comedic and even more over the top. And and that's you know? the thing that makes sense to me because the Mortal Kombat, like the game stories, like there is some comedy and like like they yeah. they fully acknowledge how dumb some of the bullshit is. Yeah, and Hollywood don't get that. Hollywood, I, Hollywood And I wanted Chris yeah. Lambert back as Raiden. And I wanted what's his face yeah. as uh is it Sun Tzu, whatever his name is, Lang Chow. Chow Lang. Yeah. Lan 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 oh, Shang Tsung. Shang, Shang Tsung. There we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't think the Shang Tsung was very good. He wasn't imposing. He was like... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And yeah. He did not, he did not say, let me conquer you. Yeah. It and just, why didn't they like... do the Ed Boon get, get over here? I don't know. And they barely did the original Mortal Kombat theme. Like, they did a sting yeah. of it. And it was like, yeah. no, that's incredible. You need to lean on that. It felt like... It felt like... One of the best video game songs ever. <laughs> It felt like a direct to video movie mm. that had twice the budget that you would have expected. 
which would have been well, great if it was direct to video, but it's as a theater. Well, uh, movie, it already made a gazillion dollars. So I don't, people are, and all these people were like, I loved it. I'm like, well, then you have terrible taste, buddy, because the story wasn't great. The acting wasn't great. The fight scenes were, I guess they were okay. But the other thing was they, they kept hyping up fatalities and there were mm -hmm. some fatalities in the movie, but they weren't that crazy. Did you feel like they were that crazy? Will? the, the, it was neat. I actually, I, I was there for the cliche where they like, like he does the perfect match and he says, uh, what's, yeah. uh, uh, what's the perfect match one? Uh, Flawless. Oh, yeah, he Flawless. goes, he like touches victory. his hat and goes, Flawless victory. So they like do those moments, and I thought those were really good. Like, that's a great way to harken yeah. back. But yeah, in general, I didn't think, I think the fights were too many cuts. Like, it wasn't, because I, I think yeah. it's every frame of painting about how Jackie Chan does fight scenes versus how like an action movie director does fight scenes, and they mm -hmm. needed to be more like Jackie Chan ones where you see and feel everything versus you're just seeing cutting. Yeah, you're just cutting, cutting, cutting. So Pat Gill yeah. has a really good uh, mini, like mini video essay about Jackie Chan's fight scenes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and and it, like it, he'll like punch something and then sell how much it hurt his hand. Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. It, it, you know, for being about fatalities, I understand that 99% of effects nowadays are VFX. Yes. But if you're trying to be brutal, which Mortal Kombat fatalities are all about, you should probably do practical. And you got to be over the top. Mm -hmm. And they didn't do that. They did VFX and it was kind of toned down. Like in the first three minutes of the movie, somebody gets stabbed and they like do a squirt of blood. And the blood was like obviously VFX. And then it landed on the ground and there was a blood stain on the ground. And that was obviously VFX composited on top of the ground as well. And it was like, it's freaking blood. You know, just use a burster pack and have that in the scene. You know, I know it's not or, quite as easy as doing or VFX. Or screw that. Anyway. It's it's Mortal Kombat. You have just tons of viscera and yeah. guts. Exactly. And and there are scenes where they have guts, but they don't look that great, mostly because they're not over the top. It's just like, oh, we got cut, and now there's guts sliding out. Like that that one lady yeah. getting cut in half was really good though. That was that was good. Yes. And so it, it was just like I'm not a Mortal Kombat fan. I know I'm not the main audience, but if you want me to like this movie and what I think this movie should be is Definitely over the top gore, and it was not that it was trying to be, but it was not, did not come across as like, oh, it was yeah. just like, oh, I guess he ripped his heart out. And it was taking it way too seriously, what is basically just a very stupid story, and they should should have leaned into that. So it was just like, ugh. Yeah. I've thought about going back uh, and playing Mortal Kombat games. I was like, because I eventually want to build like a little arcade machine. But I was like, oh, what if I loaded up some Mortal Kombat MAME and like played it with an arcade stick and Do you play Mortal fighting Kombat? games? No, but Same. I've wanted to. I've wanted to try. I figure, what better place than working through your Mortal Kombat games? I just feel like every time I try to do it, the last time I tried was Injustice Two, and they had a tutorial, and it was like a ten-step tutorial. And it started out great. This is literally the tutorial at the start of the game. And it's like, hey, do you want to learn how to play this game? I'm like, okay. And it was like, press this button to punch. I'm like, okay. You know, press up to jump. I'm like, okay. And then like step eight out of step 10 was just like, perform this 15 step combo. And I was like, excuse me, what? And I literally spent 20 minutes on that step of the tutorial going, I don't understand. When it says forward A, does that mean at forward then A? Or does it mean at the same time? And it's and I'm just like, and it's just like they are not that fighting game community is a bunch of assholes and they are not welcoming at all to new people. No, no, and quite are. frankly, I don't want to be part of it if you're not gonna if you're not gonna onboard me. If you're not going to onboard me, go screw yourself. I'm going to go play Smash because it's a better game, anyways. The fighting game that's wrong. The fighting community <laughs> is the th is the is the third worst community in gaming, followed by uh, League of Legends is second, and the Smash Melee community is the worst is the worst community that exists in video games. There is no there is like wait, but isn't Smash just part of FGC though? I would argue. I, I would I would agree with that. I like most I, I feel like a lot of FGP, FGP people wouldn't. I agree with that. Smash Melee is its own breed yeah. because Smash Melee denies that they are part of the fighting game. Yeah. Because yeah, they think true. they're above. These are the guys who famously got kicked out of Evo for being assholes. Yeah. That Chris, that year when they kicked out all the, all the Smash players is like my favorite thing that's happened at a con ever. <laughs> <laughs> the story behind that is they got a bunch of their like they so Smash Melee was no one watches it that much at, at the time. 
And so they got bumped from having a full stage to a half stage. So mm-hmm. Smash Melee players went around and were standing in front of other like monitors for games, and, like like with their backs to them, so people couldn't see. Oh my god! And like protesting. Jeez. Uh, fighting games oh, are great. Uh, they are the worst at onboarding that exists. Oh. Tutorials and. E- e- Every fighting game has a bad tutorial. There is no such thing as a good fighting game tutorial. They can it's impossible. Yeah. Um and yes, uh it, the it's it's very unfortunate but literally the only way to get good at fighting games is to get absolutely shit on and that's not fun. Yeah. Yeah. But uh yeah, uh, <clears throat> I yeah. still think I might do that but oh, who knows. I'll um, happily play more combat with you anytime. Yeah. Oh, I want to build like they have those four player ones that you can build out mm-hmm. like the yeah, different spots and just plug it into your TV. I was like, what if I had people over and we played fighting games? Street Fighter Third Strike. <laughs> Did I tell you that? Um, so Micro Center, which is kind of the replacement store for Fries, just kind of like a computer electronic specialty mm-hmm. store. We have I think there's like tw- twenty five yeah. of them across the U.S. Um, they started stocking main cabinets. Um, a year or two ago, but it's ridiculous because you go in and they're like, this is the cabinet. They have like a bin full of like bad, bad buttons, but they have the buttons and they have the cabinet and they have like side panels and they have the monitors and all this stuff. But they also have posters there and the posters are like, their posters are like, these cabinets do not include games to load games, go to this link. And it's just like basically this. The store being like, these don't have games, but here's how you pirate all the games you need. <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious. Hey, uh, if you want to do crime, we didn't tell you, but yeah. That time we went to the micro center near you, I remember those signs because <laughs> it was just like, yeah. hey, we don't have games, but you get games. Uh, I learned there's a link. micro center yeah. very close to me, um, which They're is great. Dangerous. I went there the other day. There's one on Long Island. Um, before we get away from Mortal Kombat too much, I do want to say uh, Mortal Kombat, the original movie. Street Fighter, the original movie, and the terrible Dragon Ball live action movie. What's your favorite? I still need to watch that. I still oh, need to you haven't seen it? Oh, I've only I seen need, the Mortal Kombat one. I need to force Maggie to watch the Dragon Ball movie because we watched all of Dragon Ball Z. The, so. Dragon, the Dragon Ball movie is the worst of those three by far. It might be the funniest, though. I think Mortal Kombat is my favorite. The Street Fighter movie is bad, but it's not like it's not as bad as a Mortal Kombat movie. Like It almost gets away with being a B movie, whereas Mortal Kombat is just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there, I studied all your there, moves, Sonia. <laughs> we got in that category. We got to throw in the 1994 Double Dragon movie as well. Oh, uh, I, now out of all of these, I've only seen Mortal Kombat, but I feel like uh, I need to go back and start watching some of these. We should. We, we can do a watch night of the Street Fighter movie. It's great. Oh yeah, it's Ooh. got, it's got Jean Claude Van Damme doing the splits over a torpedo. That's yes. the one where, if you give me a second, um, I not to bring up the quote, but just to bring up. Uh, has Kylie Minogue in it, and that's the one yeah, where years she's later a, she's Cammy. Yeah, she's Cammy. Jean Claude Van Damme was basically just an interview. He was just like, "Yeah, we were doing it the whole time. It was crazy." <laughs> 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 he Plus, really yeah. does. The muscles, the time they were muscles like, baby. The time they were just being coy about it, but you know, he's just like, "Oh yeah, we couldn't stop on set. It was crazy." <laughs> in between takes, this is my Jean Claude Van Damme voice. Oh boy. Um, that's great. Uh, yeah, I I've thought about, I've gone through iterations of making like a stand up arcade cab arcade the cabinet, yeah. and then like I was like, oh, what if I made a cocktail one and I could use it as a table? Um, I don't know. I'll figure it out. Anyways, I've been playing video games. Oh shit! And the game, uh, the subpixel game of the week that Will is gonna drop is probably Horizon Zero Dawn because I'm not really enjoying it at all Damn. Uh, yes hold on <laughs> yes! hold on before before ian is vindicated uh hey will what is that is that game open world or is it level based oh i yelled at ian last week yes it is completely okay, good, open good, world good. yeah yes i i pushed it back onto jake because jake described it to me as as hub area or it's like area by area based so um yeah it's 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 not bad it's just i'm not I think I tweeted this is I I can't tell if I'm enduring Horizon Zero Dawn or enjoying Horizon Zero Dawn. Interesting. Like the story I think is really cool and that's what was keeping me going. Mm -hmm. But I like I don't know if I was having fun. Um and the combat didn't like the stealth combat felt really good, but the actual just fighting like when you get caught didn't feel good. Mm 
and that was what was kind of annoying me. So I, I might dive Early back game, in. You, you, you get your ass kicked. Yeah. So I'm like, I think I'm seven hours in. I might play to ten and just so see how that is. Let me just let me help you out a little bit by by kind of bringing Chris in on this because because you're the one that's played more of Horizon Zero Dawn than either of us. You know, I think it's always helpful to be like, I'm not really getting this game. I'm this far in person who has played more than I should I keep going is it going to hook me or change after this or have I seen enough so will where where are you in the game uh I just got to Mer- meridian. meridian yeah I mean my the thing about horizon is that like there is a lot to do uh a lot of it isn't necessary though is the thing because like you can critical path that game pretty hard and like just Go like because like you're the main missions and maybe like a couple side missions will keep you well above the level you need to be to keep progressing. So like if you want to learn more about the story and like the story is a very strong point of that game. It's a shockingly unique story considering that it seems like it seems like it should be corny and generic, but they actually managed to, to have an interesting story. Um, then I would say like yeah, just critical path it and just play the story stuff. Um, but like, honestly, if you're not enjoying like the big combat, then, uh, I don't know. I don't know how much a better bow is going to do you. Yeah. I I was thinking of critical pathing it because I think David said something about that when I tweeted, um, because mm-hmm. I was doing, I was doing every single side quest before leaving a location. Uh, cause that's oh, just, that's, mad. that's just who I am. Right. Um, so I think if I, and, and I'm way over leveled, like I can tell that I'm just leveling and leveling. Um, so I, I might just critical path it if if you say that's like a viable thing to do. Um, yeah, I totally. Agree. So maybe I'll look into that, and then life will get better. Um, yeah, because I feel like I feel like you and I had the exact same feelings about the game. I just gave up on it earlier. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I've, yeah. I, I mean, uh, like so between you two and then all of Save the Team, like every like everyone is playing this, and like the wide variety of different opinions on it is like. It, it's shocking to me. I guess that's what AAA games do. Like, you know, they're, they're polarizing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's like, no yeah. Death Stranding, which is like objectively awesome. bad. So. Objectively a good <laughs> game. I just that's... want to say something here. Okay. It's, it's not, not objectively that's... a good game. I will. Oh, yeah, you're right. It is a good game. game. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, listening to the uh, the Fire Escape podcast with Dan Reichert and hearing crazy Kojima fan Dan Reichert shit on that game so hard felt really good <laughs> no that's because dan reichert's an idiot and he didn't get the game he wanted is your sorry is your dan reichert full back tattoo burning right now <laughs> <laughs> a little bit um no it's it, it is not it is me- we don't have to go into this now mechanically one of the best games that has ever has come out in the past like 15 20 years Leave it, leave it for the end. A perfect gameplay loop. It, it Princess Beach. Yeah. Uh, I have also been speaking of perfect <laughs> gameplay loops. I have been playing Loop Hero. Uh, Segway. I um I've been having this problem where I sit down at my computer uh, and I'm home all day and I don't know what to do and I have some side projects that one of them has stagnated because I need to go buy wood um, and the other one. Uh, I just started up today, so that one's actually spurring up. So less stagnation now, but that left me in a void trying to find games to play instead of just sitting at the computer and watching YouTube. Uh, so I played more Loop Hero. That game's still good. I unlocked the Necromancer. I was playing as him. I was doing a really good loop, and then I fought some guys, and immediately all of my health just drained. Like, within like five seconds it's as it's as if like someone cast a spell where all the monsters were only hitting me and it was really mm-hmm. weird i had no idea what was going on and it really pissed me off i have played more since then but it like hasn't happened again and i just don't know what happened um mm-hmm. it was really weird but suffice to say that game changes up very in a very good way when you play different characters um, yes. I, I the assassin or rogue I like, but I didn't like the mechanics. But the necromancer I think is really cool. You like summon skeletons. You have magic shield. It's very very cool. Uh, that game is a perfect one of the perfect podcast games. It's very good. Uh, mm-hmm. and then uh, I jump back into Rim World <clears throat> because I need to Ooh. record some more stuff 
for a, a spotlight episode. Uh, and I was like, I need to play this game a little bit before I start playing the actual game. So I played some RimWorld. It's going well. Uh, we crash land. I, I'm trying to pick different biomes so I can like learn the different stuff. Uh, so I'm liking this rocky, more temperate forest now. Uh, and I'm digging under, <clears throat> making my base and everything. So that's fun. A um, couple other games I just touched on, but didn't really dive into like Caves of Cud and I started a new save in Dwarf Fortress. My fortress name is Inky Squirts, which I think is hilarious. Uh random generated. Not my fault. Oh. Oh, Inky that Squirts. Oh yeah, yeah, I did I not name it that. Like got it. I cuz when you posted that in Discord, I thought you were just like, "Hey guys, look at this funny Oh no. Oak Crafts was randomly generated too. Um huh. so that's nice to play Dwarf Fortress. I I love hate relationship with that game actually it's love uh frighten of that game uh so that's what i've been playing you guys have got anything else you want to add before we switch over to the news no nope okay let me play the news theme nope 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 stop stop this is going great every time there we go there we go. No Discord bloops. No, I recorded it last time. He didn't Here's have to join. The news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's, What's up, up, news? Ah, good stuff. Yeah. If I lose it again, I'll have to have him come back on. Of course, of course. But of course. um, for now, I, I still have it, which is how's, thankfully. How's, Actually, how's he'll how's be Luke on. Doing? He'll be on in a couple couple weeks. So that's nice. Oh, Whooper's doing great, and I don't want to crash anything, so I'm not. You're not gonna check <laughs> oh, does, in. Does it crash your shit? Sometimes. Last time it did. Uh, oh no. I kind of don't don't want to check in, check oh, into no. that right now. Oh wait, it's a Whooper watch. <laughs> They're all here. Oh, no. oh my what goodness, what is Can Whooper watch going on here? Hey, if you're an audio listener, go watch the YouTube. Uh, <laughs> we're about 48 stop. minutes in, so minus five for the intro. So go go check yeah. that out. Um, no, we've got news to talk about. Uh, first on the docket, the thing I most want to talk about, and I screw all other people. Screw y'all. Because the Lost Dreamcast Castlevania game oh my has God. been found. No one cares. Um, I thought this was really cool. Um, there's cool. a Dreamcast game focusing on Sonia Belmont. Uh, it was uh, someone found a E3 demo, a pre E3 demo version, uh, and has been on Dreamcast. It was originally canceled because of the downturn of the Dreamcast and the upturn of the PlayStation 2. Um, it's from March 2000. It was canceled in March 2000. Anyways, Castlevania Resurrection. It was a prequel to the original Castlevania. Um, I don't know. That's kind of cool. I like uh, more than anything. Even though I really like Castlevania, <clears throat> I like Graham. Graham. I like Graham. I like game preservation, and I like when this kind of stuff mm -hmm. gets saved. I, I love when like Jeff Gersman talks about having like debugs, and he doesn't even know what's on them, and all that sort of stuff. Like yeah. that stuff's really cool. Um, you always hear discussions of like when a game is archived, do you archive <coughs> like a patch 1.24, patch 1.28? Like, when do you yeah. choose when it is? And like, even I was going through my ROMs that I've legally dumped from the video games I own, and even those have like, here's Super Mario Revision 1, Super Mario Japan Revision B24, like. Right. Those aren't real ones, but like it's stuff like that where you're like, oh, what? And that's where stuff for speedrunners. That's like why they play the Japanese version because it's yeah has the most like hacks. One on minute sort of change. Stuff. Yeah, so yeah, that's crazy. That's cool that this is out there. I actually might try booting it up. I think I have a Dreamcast emulator somewhere, but you can also just burn it to a CD and run it on your own Dreamcast, which I have kicking around. Uh, I think it's mm -hmm. at the studio. Uh, anyways, I thought that was neat. Mm -hmm. I just want to get it out of the way. So, who wants to go next? Humble Bundle are a bunch of bastards. Yeah. Aren't they, though? No, they, the company that acquired Humble Bundle is a bunch of bastards. Are they, uh, though? I mean, yeah. yeah. Because they're taking but, money away from charity. 
Well, I mean, all they're doing is they are capping the charity donation slider. So basically of your purchase before you could say how much of this purchase yes. goes to charity versus Humble Bundle. And now they're capping you that maximum of 15% of the purchase can go to charity. Yeah, down from like 85%. But I think part of this is that they are a for-profit company. And no, I understand that. And that since the start, so... And, and I understand that, and that's fine and all, but like it, it it's it feel like Humble Bundle. I think got a lot, got away with a lot of stuff because like it was all for charity, and like people don't really care about like like people would buy bundles of games they had no intention of playing because it was a Humble Bundle. That was that was yeah. a that was a thing that people did. Yes. Um. And like because like oh, well here at my five dollars, four of it's going to charity. That's fine. Like I I'll play one of these games, but I'm still getting it for five bucks, and it goes to charity. Boom, here's your money. But now it's like uh, I'll pay five dollars for this bundle and a buck fifty of it goes to charity and the rest goes to uh, whoever owns IGN. I can't remember the name of the company. It's just um, like I, I I don't like to me, Humble Bundle is not a storefront where I go to buy games. It was a place see, where I, I bought went, a lot of games on Humble Bundle. Well, it was a place I went and bought things when I was like, oh, I, I can get this, like you said, and donate to charity. Like, that's fine mm-hmm. with me. I'll do that. Um, or I'll pay a little bit more to donate more to charity and get this versus if I want to buy a game, I'm not going to humble bundle. So like them going in a more of like a store direction is not necessarily something that entices me because I kind of don't care. But, but the th- but the th- you said them going in a store direction, but I think the thing is a humble bundle at the beginning was about charity but they have not been about that for years. They still do some charity related stuff, but yeah. I, I, I think this is more. I think this is more a problem with with consumers not realizing that the company has changed years ago. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, like you guys are saying, oh, I would buy this bundle because I want to support charity and I get games. But for me, for years, it's been like I don't care about the charity, and it's not because I'm a hard-hearted person, but because I know this is just a bundle that this store is selling, and so I'm going to buy it as a bundle that this store is selling, and not as some sort of charity event, like the itch.io diversity bundle they had last year that was like i'm gonna support charity and get a bunch of games you know yeah. i i think this is just humble has been like this for years they're just bringing the the, the sales practices in line with their business practices and people uh, i'm sorry but i think it's y'all's fault for not realizing they don't they're not a charity organization they're not i, mean, I, I don't think I've i mean they, they still do massive else. charity drives though like they yeah. did the the black lives matter yes. one a couple months ago and like imagine imagine if during that they were like by the way they're only in 15 percent but they're not a nonprofit. So you know what I'm saying? It's I can't fault them. They're but not but a like when you, when when you build your entire brand around supporting charity and then slash the charity rates, it does feel like we want the we want more of we want the same same level of like good good behavior clout for being charity, but we also want more of your money. But I think I think part of it is I don't know that they built their entire brand around charity. I would say they launched for their charity contributions, but they have pulled back significantly from that. And I think a better way to look at it is this is a for profit retail company who is letting you donate up to 15 percent of the purchase price to charity. That's like you going to Target, you buying a whole bunch of stuff. And when you get to the register, they say, hey, do you want to take 15 percent of the price and send it directly to charity? Not on top, just 15 percent of your purchase price. Mm. And when you look at it that way, you go. That's 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 really cool that they're doing that. And, and so for me, it's like this is a for profit company that's a retail store and they're letting they're, they're literally giving up 15 percent of their profit. And before it was a lot more than that, they, they were letting you take and give to charity instead of to them. So, I, I mean, for me, I'm just like if they were a nonprofit, I'd be upset, but they're not. So, yeah, it's I, I don't necessarily I mean, I've I don't think I've I might have. I don't think I've ever bought anything off of Humble Bundle. If if I did, it was when they first started. But also, mm. I I don't need another place to buy games off of. Like, even if to they're going in the direction games. and they've been doing that yeah. direction for years, I think it's the wrong direction. And I think they like, what's the point of being a storefront, anyways? Yeah, I mean, it is that point. I mean, like, if, if it's if I if I'm not going to Humble Bundle and like giving a substantial amount to charity, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go out of my way to go to Humble Bundle. Yeah, I'll just uh, go unless it's like a, to charity. Unless it's like a crazy good deal. Yeah, exactly. Or like like yeah, Epic Epic gives me free games. Steam exists. Like uh, GOG yeah. exists. I have so much shit. I yeah, I have just, Origin on my fucking computer. But like, just to, just to push back on this because it sounds like you guys aren't super familiar with Humble. They've had the store up for years. 
where you go to them and you buy no, a game. No, I, like I, I understand that. I know they've had a store. And they, like they have a they have a subscription option that's been up for years. So yeah. this has been their business model for years, and it's working. This is just a relatively a small change. So I don't. Oh yeah, most this is more go. about me saying I don't think Humble Bundle's good. I feel like most people only go to them when they do one of the big bundles, which they do every, yeah. I don't know, what yeah. months probably. I'm fine And that. definitely their their hit rate with bundles in terms of it is, is it a good bundle or not is a lot lower now. But I would oh, say yeah, they, yeah. Still, they still have a good bundle once or twice, maybe three times a year. And especially they do a lot of like <laughs> book bundles. So if you're into that, you could do that. They they carved out a niche of like early on giving you a lot of indie games you probably wouldn't be exposed to otherwise, which yeah. at the time was like vital because Steam doesn't know what the hell it's doing and like Epic didn't exist yet. And, and what Origins gonna have indie games? What world are you living in? Yeah, I mean, I, I just, games. Yeah, I I think for me how I use Humble Bundle and how it works for me is that I subscribe to their newsletter. So every time a bundle goes up, they send me an email and I take a look at it and I go cool or i go not cool so a good example we were playing arma 3 for our series a couple months ago and like two weeks into that series they had a humble bohemia interactive bundle and it was like 25 bucks and you got arma 3 and all the dlc which Dang. i didn't have the dlc zach didn't have the dlc it was literally like 75 bucks worth of arma 3 content and it was like perfect i know about this because i have the newsletter they sent me the email i look at them, i go yes i want this bundle so i i, I definitely i wouldn't really use it as a storefront compared to steam or gog or whatever but yeah just subscribe to the email newsletters and grab a bundle when you feel like it yeah anyways that was way too contentious for <laughs> stupid story. no i i just <laughs> I, I personally was trying to separate the charity stuff from the humble bundle store like i would rather go somewhere to give to charity and buy things off a humble bundle store not go to humble bundle to buy things and give to charity yeah, and it's curious because I, I, I want to look into it. I, I mean, I guess they offer the charity option on all of the bundle purchases. Yes, yes. Or it's, it's all of them? Yeah, that's... All, all the bundles, and I crazy. believe everything in their store regularly, too. Yeah, and and like I would be upset if those bundles were based solely off of keys donated by the developers, but as far as I know, they're not. Like I think they, like I think like sometimes they are, but for the most part, it's not that. Yeah, for the most part, humble is is paying for. I think for like like the big charity drives, like like they'll donate some, but for the most part, yeah, yeah. Humble, humble gets a deal on the on the keys and resells the keys. Yeah, yeah, uh, they launder them through Steam. Um, Ian, you're it up. Is ki- it is kind of money laundering. <laughs> like <laughs> it's not it's not like it's not, no one's being hurt by it, but it is kind of money laundering. <laughs> Um, some more E3 2021 news. E3 2021 has announced their hosts, official host of their digital event. Um, it will be Greg Miller, Jackie Jing, and Alex Golden Boy Mendez. Yeah. Uh, how are you guys feeling about this? Love Golden uh, Boy. I don't Glad care. Greg Miller is unbanned from E3. <laughs> yeah, what was that? Why was he he was I, banned? They I think he was like accidentally put on a list of banned people. And he couldn't get yeah. in. He later got in, but it was they, like they, they sent him an email where they were like, "We caught somebody else using your badge, and that's not allowed." And he was like, "I literally had the badge on me all day, and I was on stream most of the day with my badge on. So there is no way, and I still <laughs> have my badge. So there is no way somebody else got caught using and, my." Badge. And he was like, "I was interviewing people for your your thing. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? I, you know, I'm, I'm feeling spicy and opinionated tonight, like every night." So I'm just going to say it. I don't like Greg Miller. He is the frat boys, Jeff Keeley. And dare. I'm not a big Jeff Keeley fan in the first place. So I just, this is like two people that I don't know. I'm sure they're great. And somebody that I don't like watching. So oh, Golden Boy's great. I don't know any of them other than Greg Miller. And I've said this before, and this isn't, Ian stole my thunder by being oh. negative already. I like Greg Miller. I don't like kind of funny Greg Miller or host Greg Miller. Like I have met Greg Miller. You're best was... friends with Greg Miller, and you know the real person. And no, he puts no, on no, no. I mean, when he's like, when Greg Miller's on other things, like when he's on the Giant Bomb couch, or when he's at League of Heels and doing that stuff, he seems just like a fun, cool guy. Versus, I don't want to seek out to watch his content for him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I kind of don't think... care, and they all always feel like kind of funny half content, the so. kind of funny tweets yeah. and stuff that appear on my timeline are people who are given things f- for free and then have opinions on them. And I yeah. am like, 
I don't, I inherently don't trust your opinion on a thing that you were given for free. People that are fanboying like brand new PR announcements as if it's going to be the greatest thing ever. And it's like, whoa, put down the Kool-Aid, buddy. You know, have some healthy skepticism. Yeah. Um. So, I, I mean, to be clear, I don't have any, I, I don't hate Greg Miller. He just rubs me the wrong way. So I'm sure this is still going to be a yeah. great show, but I'm not crazy about he's it. A, he's yeah. a good presenter. He he did stuff with, yeah, he, for EA. Yeah. He's very good at what he does. Just not, um, he's not my cup of tea. To me, Greg Miller is the guy who shows up at wrestling events with uh, really good niche reference signs, like the Port Mother 3 sign at WrestleMania a couple years ago. Um, yeah. <laughs> so he's he's fine in my books. And Golden Boy's awesome. So. Uh, how are you guys feeling about E3 2021, how it's shaping up oh, already? Oh, it's going to be so fucking bad. No, I think I think it's going to be good to have it back and to have Xbox, Nintendo, Ubisoft, Square Enix. They're all officially participating. We have something coalesced. Chris, do you remember? Do you remember last year where the, we had that the slow? Home? We have three months of news every other week, maybe. And it was a console launch year and there was that yeah. prolonged game. Oh, of my chicken. God. Awful. And part of that was because, I, actually, I would say in large part, that's because there was no E3. Oh, 100%. 100%. Reason, but yeah. E3, no, 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 bad I, organization, but they organize stuff. That's my thing. I, I love what E3 does for, like, this is the date, get your shit in. Because yeah. e- E3 sets a standard in the industry, whereas if you don't have your trailer, your announcement, whatever, for this day, it's because you missed it. We didn't fuck uh, like last year. People could say, oh, Keeley couldn't get X company to come talk or whatever the fuck. Damn it. But, yeah. uh, uh, but like E3 is like, no, it's their fault. Like they had every, yeah. everyone knows it's May. This is what you get your shit in. Um, I love that for E3. It is so poorly managed. And I am just I am petrified of how bad E3's first ever online only experience is going to be. Um, yeah. Here's the thing. If they do as good as Summer Games Fest first year, like, you know, the days where Keely was actually announcing stuff and not just like blowing mm-hmm. smoke. Um, then great, you've done it. But if they can't meet that standard, dead, dead to me. Yeah, I, I think I, I'm not going to say it's a lock that they're going to do well, but I feel like a lot of their problems have to do with physical event. So it's yeah, like, definitely. how do you set up the event? How you let people in? How you charge? How crowded it is? How empty it is? Yeah. How you're allocating booths? Which companies are going to have booths or not? Because even even for Sony, when they didn't have a booth, when they dropped E3, they were still doing state of play around that time, you know, because yeah. they wanted to be part of that 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 E3 week. Yeah. So I think the sweet sweet SEO. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think if they can, if they're getting away from a lot of that physical hassle and they boil it down to these are the presentations that you want to watch, and we're going to kind of string them together with these three hosts. I don't want to say it's easy, but it's it's avoiding a lot of the pitfalls they've had in the past. So yes. I'm I'm hopeful. It's a phenomenon that blows my mind is people that hate the Epic Game Store because they don't, they don't want to go. They, they want to give Valve their money. They, they don't care. They're very specific about which trillion dollar company they feed. Um, mm-hmm. But when it comes to news about video games, people don't give a shit where they get. Because yeah. uh, honestly, you're probably catching it on YouTube later from whatever you watch through like if you watch giant bombs e3 recaps or you watch kind of funny or funhouse or whatever the hell yeah like you're probably catching it through there or just watching the trailer of the thing you care about so yep. or as long honest, as the news Nibelian is or wario 64 <laughs> that's that's it that's yeah. where 99 percent of your news uh, imran imran yeah yeah um jeff but, grubb and jeff grubb yeah uh yeah and like but like as long as there is stuff out and it's a it's a good flow of stuff and like they have to figure out some way of like getting demos and stuff to people at home. That's that's probably one of the harder things because, you know, a big part yeah. of E3 is people going and playing the games. Uh, that's I, I don't know how that's going to work out. Um, but like as oh, long as there's a good flow right. of stuff coming out, I yeah. think it'll be fine. And I think they can <clears throat> skip the demos because they don't need to get that to end consumers. They just need to get it to journalists. Yeah. And a lot of the talk has been around. Companies are just using Parsec. They're literally just doing like remote desktop share type yeah. stuff. So the journalist logs in. They say, hey, here's the game. Play it for an hour and then we'll kick you off the session. Just get, just oh. give me two games that go like during the like Sony's press conference or Microsoft, whatever. Uh, they're like, it's out now uh, and people will be satisfied. Yeah, people love people love out now. Yeah. And I think this is going to be a good year. It's the year after console launch. You've got Bethesda part of Microsoft now with a lot of heavy rumors that Starfield is coming out this year. And Bethesda loves to do their short announced launch period. I don't I don't think it's happening. I, I'm not sure, but that's what they do. I'd with be Fallout thrilled. I, I, I mean, I'd be thrilled. 
yeah, so there's there's a lot of heavy speculation in the air that there could be some blockbuster stuff coming out. So I'm excited. My Microsoft, I think they're going to really bring it at E3 this year, if nothing else to make it the Microsoft show. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Sony still hasn't announced anything. I they think they're just going to they're just going to stay to play and say, see, ya, we don't give a shit. They had one today where they didn't really do much. Stupid, stupid ratchet stuff. and clank. That game does look yeah. good. I'm excited for that. Yeah. It's good, but I'm glad I skipped the state of play. I don't need to watch 15 minutes on a video game. I'm probably going to oh, play yeah. anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, uh, I, I would I would play, but I don't, I don't have a PS5 because they're impossible to get. You should come over. You, still, can, you can play more. Still pretty bad to get. I've, I've, I've been like I've been in three different queues this week and nothing. Yeah, I don't mean to upstage you, but I'm still trying to get a graphics card. And I was like, I recently stumbled across a discord that is all about organizing people to get them at Micro Center. And this is the, this is the meta now. This this is the meta. It's literally you figure out for your store when they get their deliveries. Usually mm -hmm. Tuesday mornings and Thursday mornings. Then you go there, literally the night before, and you camp out. And unless you're like one of the four people at the front of the line, you're not going to get an RTX 3080. And those people are literally camping out twice a week for 12 hours each time, just so they can get a 3080 and flip it. And it's like. It's what five six months past the launch of those yeah. cards. It's crazy. Or crazy. Literally still camping out overnight to get them, and then turning around and scalping them. The MSRP is up to like a thousand dollars now for these seven hundred dollar cards, and the third party price is reliably, as in this sale is happening all the time, about twenty two hundred dollars. So it is wow insane. So things are things are real bad. Things I mean, bad. It, it was exacerbated by COVID, but also just like with like how much more and the semiconductor. Yeah. Yes, and it was, it was also like just how much more like of a worldwide brand focus there is on hardware. Like you got to have a new graphics card, you got to have the, the new PlayStation. Everything is out of stock everywhere. Didn't they have to shut down production of a couple car lines because they didn't have the F? I think the F one hundred and fifty is still shut down, which is the That's what best I know. car in the world. They just shut down the Mustang production, which is also a very high selling car. There are other car companies that are going to have to start shutting down production because they can't get enough semiconductors. At my job, I deal with hardware. We're having like month long lead times stretched to three, four, five months because they're like, we're just not going to get enough chips in time. That's crazy. It's 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 bad. And the problem is it's not going to get worse for at least a year because there's not like it's not like with covid where people were like all right we're working towards we have a plan we got the vaccine we're working on it we're making progress day by day the semiconductor is just a lot of people throwing up their hands going i hope it gets better you know <laughs> like the president the president made a task force and as far as i know nothing has come of that because it's just like everybody's like we don't know what to do i think there was like a major factory that had a fire and there's nobody else stepping up and it's hard to step up and all of a sudden become a semiconductor factory and it's just like and we expensive. should go make a semiconductor yeah. factory we should do it in Jersey. What? It's full of dirty factories. It's Buy true. That train. <gasps> oh, I want a train. Train factory. Let's, let's run a train on these semiconductors. What, what could possibly running... go wrong? <laughs> oh, Nothing. No. The, the Electrical fire. Boys exploded. <laughs> <laughs> Them subpixel boys and then semiconductors floating he away. Turned into some sort of Doctor Manhattan. <laughs> oh, God is real, and he's Ian. <laughs> <laughs> I no longer care for Mario. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Can we uh, just skip the rest of these stupid news stories? Let's talk about what is as wrong with list. you? Yeah, uh, if you want to highlight your highlight, we are a gaming news podcast, and we don't talk about gaming news at all, other than the humble bundles. Though it was it was a bit of a slow story, though. I mean, a slow yeah. week, a little bit. Um, Out of Wild DLC. Yeah, that is kind of weird. Exciting. Uh, the only so thing I want to say about Stadia adding a search bar it's is unbelievable. There was a good tweet that is the the joke isn't that Stadia finally added a search bar. The real joke is that Stadia finally has enough games to warrant a search bar. Oh my god! Does it though? <laughs> no, I don't yeah. think so. Thirty-two. <laughs> um, <I> do, <laughs> How many games are on there? Yeah. yeah I just want to scroll? touch on real quick. Sony announced today that they will be uh, launching the PS5 in China on May 15th. In case you guys didn't know this, because I only found this out a couple of years ago, video game hardware was, including consoles, was banned in China until yeah. 2014. And even That's after well, that, there was like stop and start periods of what you're actually going to get approved. So that is a huge gaming market for mobile gaming and PC gaming that is going to take off once consoles really take foothold. That's why like PC bangs are so popular over there. 
Bang, bang. Uh, folks, that was the news for this week, which means it's time to figure out who will be joining the Subpixel rating system. Uh, 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 folks, we rate games. There are a number of games on this list already. I'm going to pull it up uh, so you folks can see it at home. Oh, I need to make it a little bit smaller because we've added more games. Um, I, I have I have some heartbreakers ready for you. You asked you asked for bad games last time I was on here, so I prepped. That's true. Yeah, we're trying I to have, balance it. I yeah, I got the middle of the road. I I got I got some some games that have some redeeming qualities but are deeply flawed. I got some absolute stinkers. Oh, no. you know what? Honestly, though, the list is in a decent shape right now because the solid seven is Shadow of the Colossus, which is more than a seven. But also Horizon Zero Dawn, which I feel like is, it's definitely I would say yeah, middle of the road. Maybe yeah, like 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 if like if you told if you someone walked up to me and said I think Horizon Zero Dawn is anywhere between like a seven and an eight, I'd be like, yes, you are. That is a that is a you've you've made a you've made a fine opinion. Good job. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and again, the whole point of this list is we want to have a list where a five out of ten is an actual middle of the road, objectively middling video game um and so we're just adding games you want to get the rundown uh chris do you need a link to this i'm looking at it on stream okay cool uh current rundown number one just got some new dlc leaked outer wilds uh number two yakuza zero number three doom 1993 number four mirror's edge number five mass effect two pending uh ian beating the game we will have a reconvening of the masses uh number six prey number seven oh sorry prey 2017 Number seven, Shadow of the Colossus. Number eight, Horizon Zero Dawn. Number nine, Battlefield 1943. Number 10, The Outer Worlds. Number 11, Halo 4. Number 12, Day Z. Number 13, Brink and the Worst Game of All Time. Number 14, Cyberpunk 2077. It's so there. It shows, it shows uh, how long it's been since I've been on this podcast. Uh, I was going to nominate Mirror's Edge, and uh, I was going <laughs> oh. to say it's probably worse than Battlefield 1943. <laughs> Uh, I'm well, sorry. I think you weren't on that one. Yeah, Mirror's Edge is a great game. I adore Mirror's Edge. And I actually think Mirror's Edge Catalyst isn't that bad. It's not. No, bad. it's not that bad. It's not that There's bad. There's no Mirror's um, Edge one. But it is a deeply flawed game. You're I, a deeply say, flawed person. That is I will say two true. things. <laughs> many addictions. Mirror's Edge was one of the few games where it felt like all three panelists were like on exactly the same page on where it should go. And the second thing is, at some point in the future, we're not there yet. We do need to introduce some sort of mechanic to move games a little yes. bit. We can, awesome. There's I, currently only two amendments in the amendment list. It's a while away because I don't want to complicate things until the list is much bigger. So I think we got a good system now, but at some point we are going to have to introduce that mechanic in some way. Um, uh, I think we're going to enact the light news amendment today and have each of us bring in a game here. Okay. Which yeah. is what I usually like to do. So let me, let me throw the E. And then are we adding all three or are we just... We are adding three. all three. Add all, all three. three. Okay. So, okay. so Chris, why don't you why don't you kick it off? I, I say you give us your your nominee. We'll discuss it, place it, and then we'll keep going from there. Do we want a stinker or do we want something uh, that's you know a bit more <laughs> redeemable? I think I think I would say for you personally, take a look at the list and decide if you need if you think it needs more at the top or if it needs more at the mm -hmm. bottom to kind of okay. hit that that middling requirement that we're looking for. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll do this. Cause I'm, I'm also curious as to where this is going to land. Uh, fallout. Four. Okay. <laughs> I did not want to have a fallout three discussion right now. New, new um, Vegas. Tell, tell us, tell us your feelings on this, Chris. And I then hate I'll you are wrong. Hey, you're right. <laughs> 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 Wait, you thought uh, someone hate... would be positive about Fallout 4? This game there sucks are people. Ass. There are people uh, out there. It, They're they, wrong. they took a... How, I don't want to say good. They took Fallout's okay skill system with the special thing and fucking made it into this stupid perk thing where you're, the decisions you make at the beginning of the game don't matter because you can just invest points to make your luck into to level 10 or whatever the fuck, which is stupid. Uh -huh. um, it's not much of a role-playing game. Because you're yeah. kind of, you're shoehorned into playing basically the same character who does one of two things. It's just the good thing or the bad thing uh, yeah. in every situation. Um, 
they've they, they, they took the morality system out like i thought the the faction system in uh new vegas was going to lead to something and it I, I, I was like i was like it's an okay system that has a lot of room to build on and be, become a good system now uh this game does have some some redeeming qualities like the legendary enemies and legendary weapons stuff is cool the crafting in that game is very good the base building in that game is at least entertaining uh it's kind of a lot they kind of make you do a lot though which is a problem uh, you should have like two to three bases not like eight um but then there's like the colony system is so bad uh all most of the side quests are don't it don't matter a lot of the characters are very flat all your companions are pretty boring um the story's bad and the, like if someone wants to come out here with like an expose about why the fallout 4 story is good you're welcome to it's real bad i don't even remember yeah, I, it i think your, I think your they, son is missing go get him oh yeah i yeah, think i think suck. i agree like 100 percent with you i just just to point out some other things is on the positive side they did improve the combat they did yes. improve the first person um it feels more like they added a shooter yeah, actually, now that you mentioned, they added the first person compared to Fallout 3 because it was added in New Vegas. And it feels better than the New Vegas first person. No, no, no. There's I mean, first I mean, person in 3. I mean, uh, aim down sights. They didn't have aim down sights in Fallout Did 3. It? Oh, yeah, just snipers. You're right. Yeah. Um, and it still, had, it still had interesting environments and interesting environmental storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it just felt very uninteresting. There was nothing really grabbing you. I hated the base building. So, I don't know, Will. Are you, it sounds like you're not in your head. It sounds like you're right there with us. I'm about this. Like, I love Fallout 3 is my favorite Fallout game. Um, and New Vegas is great, too. Fallout 3 and I just have a special bond. <clears throat> um, 4, I was very much looking forward to. I mm -hmm. didn't yep. play it. Did I play it on release? I did. I bought it. I one. can't remember. Any, anyways, I didn't run into a lot of issues that a lot of people ran into. I, I ran into bugs and stuff, but I didn't run into any detrimenting thing um i thought it was cool to finally see boston someone who grew up uh in new england i thought all that stuff was cool i thought the locations were cool i thought it looked good um and i thought the story was okay and i thought yeah the like side quests and stuff were cool because that's kind of what i like i just like being in that world so all that stuff kind of clicked for me but the main storyline wasn't great the ending wasn't great the base building i thought was good the base managing the bases and stuff i thought was stupid there you yeah. go that's a better way of putting it. i enjoyed like making a base and doing stuff like that like that was fun because like that was around like minecraft times and all that sort of stuff so that was that was cool but it was the constant like your base is under attack go back to this and the system they employed since skyrim with like the unlimited quests sort of thing hate it i, I never thought it quite worked out because i don't it's it's like someone it's like a board member was like we need unlimited quests because that's not something yeah. anyone wants um but like, yeah the I whole point is i want to check off boxes on my list right yeah i just want to say something real quick about the setting i fallout 3 is dc and has a lot of memorable set pieces that i remember it's dc Fallout New Vegas. It's called Vegas, but it also has a lot of really good Vegas Nevada set pieces. Mm -hmm. I completely forgot that Fallout 4 was in Boston until you said it. Even though I remembered the ballpark. Like I don't think they like notable thing. Yeah, I don't think they did enough to be like, this is Boston. And hey, maybe part of that's Boston. I mean, but they I had think like a larger part of that is like Spaniel Hall and all that stuff. Like that stuff yeah, I really but it, thought was cool in Salem. It's just compared to what the series has done before, the setting was not memorable enough for me. But I think that's chalk it up to how memorable Vegas and Washington, D.C. are compared to Boston. I, yeah, that's fair. But to be fair, D.C. is not that memorable. I mean, it does have some stuff, but I, the I way think they put it in both of those are way more memorable than. But what I mean is like is like having a slaver's camp inside the Lincoln Memorial makes it very memorable that the Lincoln Memorial is in that game. No, I, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. But I, I don't I, think I, Boston's I think as, can... memo as memorable. Three I, coasts I, off a lot of like iconography with like big statues, like the Washington fucking mine. Like it's, you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's easy. Yeah. I, I just mean that I don't think they took as much of an advantage of the Boston setting to make it iconic and memorable. I, I, I agree. Boston doesn't have enough to offer up front as iconic and memorable, but they, they definitely could have done more. I mean, with the freedom trail and stuff, I thought they did a really good job with that. But yeah. Um, so, Chris, 
you kick it off. Where would you put this? Um, I would put it. Ooh, I can't. Wow, well, that's that's rough. Above Halo Four. I was just thinking the exact same thing. Well, and and man, I, that's rough because I I I don't think Fallout Four I, is honestly, a good game, but I also don't think Halo Four is a good game. <laughs> I, actually, I would put it below Halo 4 just because Halo 4 is a solid game. There's nothing amazing about it. There's nothing great about it. But it plays and it runs fine. And Fallout 4 yeah. is a very buggy mess. Well, it wasn't horribly buggy, but it definitely has Bethesda jank. Probably still has that Bethesda jank. What, what do you think, Will? I'd pull it, put it below Brink. Whoa. No, that is inappropriate. Not below Brink. At least Fall Four is a game. Oh, I'm I sorry. See... I'm. <laughs> I was. I... I don't mean this my idiotness as a uh, uh, excuse, but I was looking at this list upside down in my brain. <laughs> and when Chris said above Halo Four, I thought he was insinuating Fallout Four was better than Halo or was worse than Halo Four. Oh, okay. So I was trying no, to say above that. Brink. Sorry, I think. It's above Brink. You think you you think you you think it is better or worse than Halo Four? I think it is it is better than Brink, worse than Daisy. Yeah, he's putting it he's putting it between oh, Daisy. Oh, sorry, I, yeah, Daisy. So, um, I, I don't I don't. This isn't me just stating my opinion again, but like the middle between your two opinions is yours. is is between Halo Four and Daisy. And I, I, I would I would say pretty vehemently that I think Fall Four is a more complete game than Daisy. Yes, yes, I agree. Yeah, I'll concede and, to that. And even and like it's not a good game. <laughs> yeah, wrap Maggie it up. Her. Maggie's mad. Her. We're having fun here. <laughs> so so does it sound like we're settled on uh below Halo Four but above Daisy? Yeah, I'm yeah, fine with that. that. Okay. Um locked Will. it in. Your turn. Uh, I brought control. Uh, okay. Control okay, well, is a fantastic game. I like it. It's fine. It is one <laughs> of the best. Other than Death Stranding. One of the best uh, lore built worlds in a video game I have seen in a very yeah. long time. The Bureau of... Yeah. Old houseness is crazy cool. <laughs> Maggie wants Ian to go to bed. Um, she's making she's making eggs. So like so she's just, the mystery. She go to bed. <laughs> the mystery of going there and it's like, oh, the old director just shot himself. You're the new director now. Why are you the new director? What's this crazy gun? What are these cool powers? Who are all these floating people that are chanting? Who is this <laughs> red telephone? Uh, this is also coming up a lot lately because i'm reading the book that was the inspiration for control right now oh um, so that is really making me which literally has control in it um so that's like really making it on my mind um and i think i might replay this game it's also really cheap on gog right now so mm -hmm. i might just buy it for ray tracing um it's just i i understand the criticisms of it which i'm sure some of you you either of you will bring up with like the ending's not the greatest, doesn't end in the right places. Um, some of the combat puzzles can be a little too difficult and a little uh, confusing. But uh, that game also has some incredible sections like the maze yes. section and some <clears throat> incredibly unique characters. And it's, it's just beautiful. Yeah, that's it. Bioshock Infinite, I, I have said before, has one of the best first hours in in, video, in in any video game, and then it falls off a cliff. Control has one of the best first like three and a half hours in a video game, and then it does okay. <laughs> <laughs> I um I I agree with you on all the points about world building and story, and and like odd mechanics they have, like what is it, the Overlook Motel? Oh, um, yeah. like it's great. And I really enjoyed that. I didn't finish this game. I think I got about halfway through it. Combat's not not that good. It it's just not. It's, 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 
fine. Yeah, on the mouse and keyboard, it controls a little wonky with the powers mm. and stuff, and the boss fights are frustrating. And the fact that they do the whole, oh no, the enemies respawned behind you in this area, so now you got to clear the area again. It's just very frustrating. And that was enough to put me off this game. And so I feel like this game is, it knocks a lot of things out of the park. But that combat was bad enough. The combat and the, and the enemy response were bad enough to push me away from that compelling story. And that, at least in my mind, that's 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 a big deal. That's a big note. Yeah, I guess I, like the combat flowed really well for me. Like I liked the powers and the like mm -hmm. dancing around enemies and blowing them up and everything and changing them onto your side. So it's definitely something that didn't, in my case, detriment me. Did right. you play on a controller or on mouse and keyboard? Uh, controller. Okay. Yeah. I, I, also I, play, I, I also play a controller. I think it's something about the way the power controls were set up on the mouse. I mean, on the keyboard that made it wonky. I'm, I'm trying to remember. There was some specific where it was like you had to take your fingers off important buttons to fire important powers. Mm, and it was like, and I was like, so I'm in a boss fight. And I'm just like, let me pause real quick and do this power and then go I back. I feel like yeah. half of developers expect everyone to be using a controller unless it's an Oh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Will, where would you put this? Uh, Chris, did you have opinions before I? Oh, um, I mean, I, I think Control is a good game. I think the story kind of falls off a cliff near the end. Um, it just kind of, it just kind of loses itself, which is a shame because it's overall like it's a pretty well paced story. Uh, and I think that it has the Alan Wake problem. I mean, obviously, uh, of like the combat and like a lot of a lot of the gameplay is because well, we gotta have a video game to to get you to the good story stuff mm -hmm. instead of just like you know just having a narrative experience because you know people aren't gonna buy that. Oh yeah. man, what if they did just have a narrative experience though? But and not even that, but just like get rid of all the gunplay and it's just about powers and then get rid of half the combat. I would have been on board oh, 100%. Man. All the the other thing that game does really well, uh not to go back onto it is um it does a lot of I don't know how to describe this, but when things in a video game work the way they're supposed to work, so like there's mm -hmm. projectors that are projecting the mm -hmm. yeah, the yeah, videos yeah. of the guy, which in and of itself yeah. are really good and well produced. But when you hit that projector, it falls across the floor and projects onto whatever it lands onto. In yeah, a, it's a beautiful game. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I think to Chris's point, I don't think the story doesn't end well. I think the story doesn't end, and they're just expecting another game and DLC and stuff. Yeah, that's and they kind of just don't end it. That there's like but, there's no satisfaction of resolution. But did you not learn from Alan Wake, people? <sighs> like, come on, you still haven't paid that game off. <laughs> but Alan Wake, oh, Alan Wake's so good too. Alan Wake's so cool. Um, I would put this above Mirror's Edge. I would put this uh below Mass Effect Two. I don't look at Mass Effect Two because. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god then fine but, it's below mirror's edge no i i would i would agree with below you're putting it below mass effect 2 correct I'm putting it oh no but i like mass effect 2 quite a bit man it's i think the only it's the only good story, mass effect game the story is so the story in world building is so good in control that i would put it above mass effect 2 well so, so that's, that's our counters will i won't settle for anything Less than above Mass Effect 2. Then you're the above Mass sounds Effect like, 2, it is. Sounds <laughs> like it's above Mass Effect 2. Look, I'm not gonna die on the hill of Mass Effect. That franchise sucks ass. <laughs> it's control two's a good two's, two's a great game. Control I just, all, I, all caps. I can't wait for my objective playthrough of Mass Effect 1 and 2 so oh, I can God. finally come in with the definitive oh. factual opinion. I honestly I, don't know where it's going to land. I don't know where it's going to land, but I can't wait to move it. I have opinions about Mass Effect. Oh, boy. And it's that, the it's one you know, that isn't should, worth playing. We should try and line it up because I kind of like the idea of it's less of a discussion and more of you guys trying to sway me after I've played the game, but before I make the definitive judgment. You know, it's That's like fine. I am the judge and you're arguing your case. Uh, it has we're, been, uh, we're, we're politics. It has been long enough since yeah. Mass Effect 2 that I don't think I could argue for it or against it. Because <laughs> I don't remember. Um, uh, Ian, what's your right, game? All right, so my game is middle hyphen lowercase earth colon shadow of Mordor. Oh. Look, I know this game has bad punctuation, and I know that half of it is because of Tolkien. Hold on. But 
it, it, most yes, people don't care wrong. about the bad punctuation in games. It's really just you with your Call of Duty <laughs> underscore Black Ops colon uh, hashtag. Spider man. hashtag, it man. It doesn't really bother me that much. <laughs> yeah, it's hashtag, stupid. Man. It's like, okay, look, I'm just going to go on a tangent real quick. It's called A Song of Ice and Fire, which is stupid because the better title is clearly A Song of Fire and Ice. Because it's iambic, you idiot. You picked yeah. the wrong title, you moron. But Fire and Ice is a famous poem. A Song of Fire and Ice. But he named it A Song of Ice and Fire, which is not. It's, it's, but it's I, ice. Wouldn't, I would do Because Ice, ice is fire. the main character. It's not interesting. It's stupid. It's stupid. Also, Game of Thrones is actually a better name, and I don't care. Game of Thrones ruined itself. Yes. yes. Think about All that. I'm, is that I'm the type of person that... It's, can be picky about my titles because it's very important. And if you can't pick that right, then I can't trust you with the rest of it. But anyway, that's fair. Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. This game came out in 2014. It kind of came out in a weird period where, if I remember correctly, 2014, there were just not a lot of like AAA blockbuster, actually good video games that came out. And and I remember, I remember that in particular because this game kind of stumbled into first place for Giant Bomb's Game of the Year discussion for 2014. Um, it introduce the nemesis system and it's great for the nemesis system but it has open world it's not that great it's just kind of a lot of samey environments and samey enemies it also um, didn't need to be lord of the okay. rings it didn't need to be lord of the rings it kind of just shoehorns into the story it doesn't ruin it but it doesn't really benefit from it and um i i you know this game it just it had a great thing it had a very, very good thing in the Nemesis system, surrounded by a lot of like mediocrity in a mm -hmm. way. Did you guys play this? What, what's your What's your? What's your I take? played. I played both of them. I played I, Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War. I think I played about an hour of Shadow of Mordor, and then I watched you play Shadow, shadow of War. War, which is just it's just a shadow of it's. I mean, it's just a replica of the first game with barely. Yeah, it's it's just the same, but more. And yeah. again. Um, so, I, the nemesis system, I it, it is one of the most un, underutilized things in game. It yeah. is so cool. It allows you to do so much stuff. Uh, and like that game does a really good job. Like if you, you know, if you scare a uh, certain uh, villain or orc away enough, he comes back as like the fearless or whatever the hell. Yeah. Yeah. I, I and what, what about the rest of the game? What was your feelings? on? Uh, story's a bit shmeh. Yeah. Uh, it's it, it really feels like they were just like fishing through the Cimmerillion for something to snag onto, and they were like, "Ah, I got it. We'll make we'll nail the character that everyone loves, Celebrimbor. That's, That's right. right. He's back, folks, in Pog form. That's um, right. We've also got Sabulba, the Spider Queen. <laughs> it's yeah. just like, yeah. Uh, so I'll, wait, it's it's another it's another fucking Tolkien thing that doesn't need to have Gollum in it, but he shows up anyway too. Yeah. So I, in terms of where I. I would put this on the list. I would put it above Outer Worlds simply because the Nemesis system is so good and so unique. Outer Worlds is like a great middling game in terms of it's taking that Bethesda type of game and doing it a little bit better. Yeah. But it's also trying something fresh, which is, you know, nice. Yeah. Whereas the Nemesis system, even though it's surrounded by a lot of mediocre game, the nemesis system is so good and like you're saying just revolutionary mm -hmm. it's just it just stands out so well that i think it should be above outer world because of that what do you guys think well uh first of all my initial reaction i thought you said outer wild and i was <laughs> really no. weirded out <laughs> no that's where yakuza zero goes <laughs> yeah uh it's where doom 2 goes um, I <laughs> would put this, I mean, my heart says below Halo 4, but wow. I would say for safety's sake, I would put it above Halo 4. Okay. What do you think, Chris? Uh, I think it's like, I guess above Outer Worlds, I could argue for above Battlefield 1943, but I really don't want to have the conversation <laughs> Comparing Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, and Battlefield 1943. Because, man, yeah. this list is all about comparing apples to oranges, but there are no two more dissimilar games than those two. So yeah. I will I, say, yeah. uh, put it below Battlefield 1943. 
because at least Battlefield yeah. 1943 has a better story. The whole story of how he beat Hitler, folks. Uh, it, but Battlefield 1943 takes solely in the Pacific. I know. It's all, it's all this <laughs> but Outer Worlds is better than Shadow of Mordor. I don't know. But you and I didn't even finish the game. That is, has nothing to I do like with I like Outer Worlds a lot. I did not I give Outer up Worlds on it. Outer Worlds has potential. But I, I would say Outer Worlds is, is a pretty good game. I didn't finish it, but the whole time I was playing it, I was enjoying it. I can't say the same thing about Shadow of Mordor. But... I, but but Shadow no. of the Highs and Shadow of Mordor with the Nemesis system no. are much no. higher than anything in no. Outer Worlds. I have tried Shadow 100%. of Mordor no less than four times, and I cannot get into it. Outer Worlds, I have at least 15 hours in, and I only stopped playing it because Karen was playing it. But you haven't picked it back up. I haven't picked it back up because other games have come out. What, Karen? Yeah, I said your name, but you're not... Uh, well, I'm saying I how think, Outer Worlds was a good game. Yeah, I don't. I know this isn't a pure vote, but she said, "Eh, okay, fine. It goes above Outer it Worlds." Fun. There we go. Okay, it there goes above. Go. Damn, you know Karen in with that. But you, you, can, you, you can't have you can't have the sex in Shadow of War. Yeah. So, um, <sighs> uh, just real quick, I just want to say that after this discussion, we now have 17 games on the list. Which means number nine is the most middling five out of ten game of all time. Perfect, perfect middle. Horizon Zero, Zero Dawn. Dawn. Perfect. <laughs> uh, let me read through the Good. list. Uh, number and, one, uh, and, and and just barely better than Horizon Zero Dawn is the masterpiece Shadow of the Colossus. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> needs to move. <laughs> this list is so long. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, number one, Outer Wilds. Number two, Yakuza Zero. Number three. Doom 1993, number four, Mirror's Edge, new number five, Control, number six, Mass Effect 2, number seven, Prey 2017, number eight, Shadow of the Colossus, number nine, Horizon Zero Dawn, number 10, Battlefield 1943, new number 11, Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, number 12, The Outer Worlds, number 13, Halo 4, new number 14, Fallout 4, a lot of fours, Number 15, DayZ. Number 16, Brink. And number 17, the worst game of all time, according to us here at Subpixel, Cyberpunk 2077. Worse ah. than Brink. I'd rather play Brink. It's Put that sad. on a bumper you know, sticker. We, we started <laughs> the ultimate argument, and then it just became crystal clear where it belonged. We need to make sure it's the I'd rather be playing Brink. Yeah. Ugh, folks. Does anyone does anyone still own that? Can we just use stuff with the Brink license? Who's gonna stop us? Can we, Ian? You know people at ZeniMax. Can you email them? I do. I talked to. Like, I sent an email to ZeniMax today. <laughs> can you email them and say, "Hey, we'd like to buy the rights to Brink." How much do you think? I would honestly, seriously entertain that. I I think they would probably charge for Brink twenty thousand because I feel like I feel like when THQ Nordic was buying up a bunch of stuff some of the prices leaked out and they were not that much. Oh, what if we bought Brink? Oh, that's, I should send them an email. You should, I will, I will. <laughs> can you legit do that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Because I genuinely want to know. I would, yeah. I would, yeah. I would, we could have I, a stream to buy Brink. We could have a, we could just yeah. launch a GoFundMe to buy <gasps> Brink. What would we do yes. with it? Oh, we would have sex with it. Oh, so much. We would just play the music on Twitch because we own it. <laughs> I feel like I feel like we, we could honestly we bought a brink. I I would say we honestly could make money if we just came up with like an incredible pitch for how to remake Brink and then we turned Wanted around all said, the money. We just said, "Here, it's twice what we paid for it, but you get our pitch, you get the rights to our pitch and to the game. It's ready to go." Add it to Maybe. the Bethesda launcher. Um, let me play some music here, folks. That was a show. It was a show. Uh, thank you for joining me today, Chris. I am glad you were on this. I haven't seen you for a while because we didn't do I anything know. at the studio today. Been you got boys. your Johnson and Johnson just like Ian I did. Um, kick my ass sorry. today. Mustache hair in my oh. mouth. Um, yeah, I got my second shot on the nineteenth. So well, that'll be fun. Um, Ian, thank you as always for joining us. Uh, next week, uh, I don't know why I'm mentioning next week. Next week is the same time, same place. Um, it's going to be David because traditions must be upheld. It is David. I already I booked I booked out the month of May. 
So Damn. Oh. I'm incredible. Uh, I need to start actually ponying, ponying up and bucking up and actually messaging actual guests. <laughs> Not that yeah. you guys aren't actual guests, but Damn. like get some, some real people on here. Um, so I got to do that. But I feel like just to say, I feel like that's the only way you're going to put me on my best behavior is by having a guest on. Yeah, that's true. I want to just see what they would pitch Ian, for the Ian subtextual rating Ian, system. <laughs> Ian doesn't respect any of us. So. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> until, until they pitch their own game for the list and I just shit on it. <laughs> Okay, folks, you, thank you for you, tuning in. You get Ben Esposito on. He's like, Donut County. He's like, it sucks. Subpixelfilms.com is where you can find all of our content at Subpixel Team on all the socials. Chris's stuff you can find at Save Data Team on all the socials, including YouTube. Whew, folks, thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week with another fantastic episode of Local Chat. But until then, have a lovely, lovely evening, and we will see you then. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye.